But when it comes to gender affirming care, which is really child abuse, this is actually an assault and it's child abuse. And this, this practice should never happen. It's so disgusting and appalling, and it's an embarrassment to our country. You see, I'm one of those that believes the Republican Party is only worth, um, worth being a, a, a true party, worth deserving of the people's votes if we are willing to stand up and stop horrific things like child abuse and like so-called gender-affirming care, which is really genital mutilation. It, it's puberty blockers that cause chemical castration. Uh, teenage girls actually having their breasts chopped off. Uh, teenage boys being castrated. This needs to be illegal, and I'm introducing a bill called Protect Children's Innocence Act, and it would create a law that would cause it to be a Class C felony for any person involved in so-called gender-affirming care. That means genital mutilation surgery, that means hormones, that means puberty blockers, anything involving any, any youth under the age of 18, because these kids are too young to make these awful decisions that will affect them and will be permanent for the rest of their lives. All right, Ryan. So I think this is a good example of uh, we don't have the bill yet. She's releasing this bill today, um, and you know it's it's like from my perspective, is she right that a lot of gender affirming care uh, I think would be better classified as child abuse than medical care? Yes. Does that mean that criminalizing it in every case is going to be the right step? Probably not, because um, there have been children conditioned to exist in this environment where they are told that you know changing pronouns, um, whatever it is, and, and they may have very real gender dysphoria, is a, a real treatment. And so that becomes a problem, in, like trying to get out of this era in which kids have been you know, conditioned to see a lot of these things as, as real treatments, I think you, you, do, you, you run into some problems. That said, um, as, as much as I you know, wouldn't want to uh, you know, side with Marjorie Taylor Greene on certain things, I don't think she's broadly incorrect on this one. I do think that a lot of this, um, it's, it's time to move in that direction. I think Europe has moved in that direction a lot faster than the United States, um, although it's still too slow. Um, and eventually, I think we'll probably get there. Uh, curious what you think about this, this bill that she plans to unveil today. Uh, it doesn't feel like the kind of thing that needs to be legislated. It, you know, it's, it, it makes me pretty uncomfortable to have any, any lawmakers coming in, coming in between these medical decisions here, and especially when, get, when given their lawmaking pen, you don't know how far they're going to go with this, too. Uh, you know, she mentions uh, puberty blockers for any reason. You know, th there are a lot of reasons that a doctor would prescribe puberty blockers to to a, a an adolescent that have nothing to do with even gender dysphoria. Like, the, you know, there there are medical conditions yes. that that re that require this. And just as we saw the kind of overturning of Roe v. Wade and the banning of abortion in a bunch of states affect people who have diff who have all sorts of uh, of, of maladies that are unrelated to pregnancy. You know, all of a sudden, if something is remotely associated with, say, an abortive feasance or something, now pharmacists are saying, well, you know, we know you're not using this for, uh, for a medical abortion. However, some people theoretically could, so therefore we're not going to, going to fill this prescription for this medicine that you have been taking for years for this other condition. And that's Those are the types of things when you start allowing politicians to, to jump into the, in, into the, not just in the waiting room, but then back into the, into the doctor's office, you know, that it, you know, if, if, if what she's saying is true, then, then let's, you know, let, let's have a public conversation about this and, and resolve it, you know, uh, medically and scientifically. That's, that would be my read on it. It's, it's tough because I think the medical institution and the media that's supposed to act as a watchdog for the medical institution has been so seduced um, by the need to sort of be politically correct on all of these different topics and by uh, these ideas that have changed really, really quickly without, there's actually a great New York Times report on this recently, without uh, the studies and the research coming first. So that is to say the politics and the, the sort of ideolo the ideology came first and then they were trying to do 
all this research, but so far a lot of it has not borne out the intended ideological conclusions. And so in that vacuum, um, I do think a lot of children have been harmed, uh, and, and irreversibly so in many cases. And their stories, the stories of detransitioners tra are so heartbreaking. But because you need to have the ability to study this really long term, we don't actually know how many are out there and how many will be out there. And so we're still sort of in a period where we're trying to understand the scale and the scope of the problem. Um, and that gets really, really difficult. But in the vacuum, I understand. And that's why this stuff, when our institutions fail, it's why it creates this vacuum, this power vacuum, where it becomes really easy for people like Marjorie Taylor Greene to step in. And what's frustrating from my perspective is that she's setting up with this bill. We haven't seen it yet. Um, but it, it sounds like she's talking about gender affirming care really broadly. I don't know if it's going to be classified that broadly in the bill. But there are gender dysphoria is, is a real condition that uh, you know fewer people suffer from than are diagnosed with. I think the diagnosis has, has been inflated beyond what actually exists in terms of gender dysphoria. Um, but there may be physicians that because people who very much do have gender dysphoria have been taught that they they do need to be protected by pronouns, whatever, um, that that is you know happening and it shouldn't be criminalized. So I don't know that it's a situation where any Republican who doesn't co-sponsor this bill, which maybe doesn't have exceptions for the very real medical uses of puberty blockers, I, I don't know if, if it should be that litmus test right, for the Republican Party. Now, for the Republican Party. Now, what is a woman? That should absolutely be a litmus test for the Republican Party. We should be able to have clear scientific biological definitions of what a man and a woman is, and those should inform our political decisions um, to the extent that politics should have any involvement in these questions. But I don't, I don't know that I, I necessarily I'm confident this bill is going to itself be uh, the perfect litmus test as much as it's a public relations stand. You mentioned that Europe is moving faster on this than the United States. Do you have, I haven't followed this as closely as, as some others. Do you have a sense uh, for why it is that, that Europe has, is, is moving on this? I don't know. There's been um, some good reporting to this extent. Actually, the New York Times story that I referenced um, is focused heavily on some of the gender clinics in Europe. Uh, Britain, just or the UK, just closed one of their gender, the, their main gender clinic. Um, I, and I don't know exactly why it's moved faster. I, it seems to me that they're sort of uh, feminist left. Those battles, uh, for whatever reason, started happening between what the, what they will derisively refer to as TERFs. Um, and you know the the kind of pro trans feminist wing of the party like uh, not of the party of the of that group um, i think those clashes started happening earlier and i think the the so called turfs um, you know were able to consolidate support and maybe a little bit more influence earlier than they have here um, but I, I actually don't have a good answer for why that's happening one thing that i did see that was interesting is that in the uk when you have socialized medicine it's much easier to track and study the effects of gender affirming care and care in general in, in general, because um, everyone who was getting this gender affirming care was going through the same clinic. And so you had this much more specific concentration of people that was way easier to study. Thus, the results became clearer earlier. Um, and it was you know the mechanism then for shutting it down is easier, too, because it's a, a government clinic, basically. Right, right. Uh, so, hey, here's for socialized medicine from the right, right? <laughs> all, of, all of a sudden. President it just occurred Rami. to me, by the way, you know, TERF, which is, stands for uh, Trans Exclusionary Radical Feminists, just occurred to me that if, if you want to do the reverse, which, was, would be, which would be Trans Inclusionary Radical Feminists, would also be TERF. So both sides are turfs, right? You're right. Yeah. Now this is yeah. a, that's a real yeah. Very confusing real... though. <laughs> yeah. Well, we will eagerly await the rollout of Marjorie Taylor Greene's bill, um, and, and we'll you know obviously continue to to follow this issue. But um, you know it's it's one that people have to recognize. That's that's what's tough about it. Like a lot of this this care, I think, has been uh, really destructive, and we probably disagree on that. But I think a lot of it has been really really bad and, and tragic. But um, a lot of th there are people with gender dysphoria, and in the rush to sort of correct, you know, we don't want to to hurt people who are legitimately already suffering. Right. And what do you do about the people that are already engaged in some type of this? That's you know, if all of a sudden it becomes illegal. Right. No, it's a great question. There could be medical side effects from that. 
Well, yeah, we'll, we'll continue, of course, to, to follow the story, and we'll be back with more Rising right after this.